Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaide here. Sheikh Gunfatuma, welcome. Uh, Ruth Price, Mkiru Ojimadu, Daniel Oshoma, Olaade. Bright Shibu is a Eric Osadolo Obi Oji Madu, welcome. Da Vinci Tokumbo Adeshade Bata Shaji. Formula you agape. Choose Bosch sweater. Joyce Arrow. Tena Ante. Ushuko. Nancy. 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 Dayo Bishesa. Michael Lopez. Anastasia McDonald. Purity Life. Paul Eric, Mariam David, David, wow, it's David, not David. Ola Inka Abraham, Glory, Vladimir Krishenka, Koye Jodola. Well, blessings everyone. Again, here we go. And uh, you see, I'm not in my normal place. But this week is a very busy week for me. It's a week I'm doing a leadership training for our church. So I do this training yearly for the church before the HMT. The HMT training is going to come up in November. But before the HMT training, I'm doing a training for our local people here. For our local church here. So... Uh, so, so I'm I'm not at home. From the morning, I'll be off, you know, doing you know some program or the other in the church. So anyway, but here we go. Uh, we are here with you, even though the light is not great yet here. Uh, we can't find a way to set up the light to be better, but some people are going to work on it. So I'm going to be here till like midnight today before I go back home. Then I will have to drive about one hour or two, one and a half hours before I get to my house. And then, you know, do what I need to do at home before I come back to you people tomorrow morning. And then I'll be back again. So anyway, the message of today is, and we continue, of course, to talk about, uh, about you know, crises and trials and, uh, and all that. So today's message is Kuda Naushlan, Bila Lushe, and Prejishima Naushlan. So, um, today's message is, uh, uh, what about if my trial, my crisis, tribulation, adversity is caused by me? So, what happens if my trial, adversity, and problem is caused by me? You know, this morning we spoke about situations when our crisis and trouble is caused by God? What about if my crisis is caused by me? What about if I'm to blame for my crisis? What do you do? What do I do? How do I cope with that? How do I come out of that situation if I am the reason for my crisis? You know, uh, unfortunately, what happens to many people is that when they know that they are to blame for their crisis, they become depressed. And when they know that they are to blame for their crisis, what they do is that they go into self-condemnation and into self-judgment. Self, self, uh, but you don't need to judge yourself. Jesus has already paid the price for us to be redeemed from even our own very actions, from our own very actions. Even our actions are not reasons for us, even when we are to blame, even when we are at fault. Those are not enough reasons for us to be, you know, con you are, you are judged uh, self-condemnatory 
and self condemning and we don't need to condemn each other i mean one another or ourselves just because we have to blame for our trouble so uh that is a possibility that you know uh you are to blame for your crisis and that is a reality that we all have to face and that's a reality that we all have to deal with that you know for most of our troubles and most of the challenges and the problems that we have in our lives we are to blame for whatever happened to us. So there, yes, there are places, there are instances when other people are to blame, and there are instances when God Himself is sending us trial. But uh, even when we are to blame for our trials, and when we are to blame for our crises, you know, most important thing is don't go into self-judgment. Don't go into self-condemnation. Know that the Lord Jesus had paid the price for your. For, for the redemption of your sin. The Lord Jesus has paid the price for the redemption of your fault and even your guilt. Even when you are guilty, even while you are guilty and when you are guilty, uh, you can still, uh, you know, yeah, it's not true, Pastor Samar. Yeah. You, you know, when, when you are guilty, you don't, when you are guilty, you don't have to, uh, you know, you, you know, keep on living in that and dwelling in that, that, you know, you don't, you know, that you deserve some judgment or that you are at fault or that you are bad. And that's what we want to avoid. So how do you now come out of it? If you know that you are the one that is to blame for your problems and you are the one to blame for your crisis and you are the cause of that crisis, you know, things could happen in life, you know. You know, I, I could mention a lot of instances or a lot of, pro, you know, examples where we are the cause of our own troubles and when we are the, where, when we are the cause of our own problems. But still, whatsoever the situation might be, maybe you fall into sin, maybe you fall into adultery, maybe you got pregnant, maybe you did abortion, maybe you uh, divorced your husband, maybe you divorced your wife, maybe you smoked, maybe you drank, maybe you... You know, you left God. Maybe you bastard. Maybe you didn't pay your tithe. Maybe you stole money. Maybe you killed somebody. It doesn't matter what you did. I mean, all of us could have done anything wrong. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Jesus paid the full price for your fault. Jesus paid the full price for your guilt. Jesus paid the full price for your for even those instances when you are to blame. For those instances when you are at fault, you don't, that, yes, we are not denying the fact that you are at fault. Yes, we are not denying the fact that you are to blame. But what we are saying is that don't kill yourself. God has paid the price for your blame, for your guilt, and for your fault, and for the wrong things you did. So how do we come out of it right now? now that is what the issue is. Okay, now, number one, what do you do? What if my trial and my crisis is caused by me? Well, if your crisis is caused by you, and your trial is caused by you, number one, what you do is accept responsibility. Make sure that you accept responsibility for what you have done wrong. Or maybe for what you have left undone. Make sure you accept responsibility. You know, and you have to accept responsibility not before men. You know, most people think that when you have done something wrong, you've got to accept responsibility before men. Yes, in some instances, you might need to accept responsibility before men as well, but those are not your first point of call. Your first point of call is to accept responsibility before the Lord, before the one who paid the price for your guilt, before the one who paid the price for your sin, before the one who died for you, and before the one who knows better what you have done, before the one who you sinned against. Because the very first person that we all have sinned against is the Lord. And he knows what you have done, even before you confessed it, even before any other person knows about it. So you go to him first. Let him be your confidence. Let him be the one that you have to confess to, first of all. Go to God and let him know that I was wrong. I did this thing that is wrong. Take responsibility before God. And that thing, that take the act of taking responsibility for your sin before God is what we call repentance. It's what we call repentance. Repentance is what we call the act of taking responsibility for your guilt, taking responsibility for your fault, taking responsibility for your for for anything that you've done wrong, for anything, for whatever thing that you is it that you did wrong. 
So what we do is that we take responsibility for our sin before God, or we take responsibility for the things that we did not do, that we failed to do, that led to whatsoever result, or that led to whatsoever you know, consequences that we are now seeing in our lives. Even before we see the consequences, it is still better for us to go before God, take responsibility, repent of our sins, and ask him to forgive us. And be, do that sincerely. Let God know that you are totally sincere. And convince God of your sincerity. Don't just say it shallowly. shallowly. Don't just say it uh, casually. Make sure that you are broken before God. Make sure that your repentance is genuine. And make sure that you are, you know, you are truly broken before God. And you are telling him that God, yes, I messed up. I missed it. I messed up. I miss it. And you know what? You are going to have that. Don't say, oh, I did that last time. Or I did that two years ago. I did that one year ago. Or I failed again. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. But just make sure that each time you come back to repent before God, you are actually doing this sincerely. You know, the Bible says that the righteous will fall seven times and seven th and he's still the righteous. He will stand. As long as you keep on standing, as long as you keep on having the desire to keep on going, as long as you keep on desiring to live right, as as long as you still keep on striving to be right before God, that you are still a righteous. God is still calling you a, a, a righteous person anyway. So, but the most important thing is that don't lie down there. Don't you know, keep on lying there, you know, and, you know, wrangling in your own problem, in your own situation, in your own sorrow, and in self-condemnation. Get up before God, take responsibility for that sin, I mean, for that sin, and tell God to forgive you, repent of your sin, be sincere about it, and make sure that, you know, you are trying your best to move forward. So, now, now other people... Another challenge that people have is that they say, but God, I've, I mean, but, you know, pastor, I've, I've done this so many times. I've fallen so many times and will God still forgive me? Don't judge for God. Don't think that you are in the position to decide how many times will God forgive you. Don't think that you are in the, you know, in the position to say you have sinned in long enough or so many times enough that God will never forgive you. The thing with God is that, can you imagine, there is no human being that will ever exhaust God's goodness. You will never exhaust God's mercy or God's goodness. You can never say, oh, I've repented 1,000 times, so God is tired of me. God will never be tired of any human being. God will never be tired of you. There is just no way you could run God out of business. You cannot run God out of business of forgiving. He is the master in forgiveness. He is the master in, in, in mercy. So, so what I'm saying is that whatever you have done wrong, even if you are doing wrong every second, you will still not exhaust God's goodness and God's love. I mean, can you imagine God is telling us, we who are human, that we should forgive people uh, 40, 40, 40, I mean, seven times, 70 times in a day. So that is like 500 times in a day we should forgive people. And he's saying if anybody comes to you to, for, to ask for forgiveness, even if it's going to be 500 times in a day, you 449 times, in, uh, 499 times in a day, you go ahead and forgive them in a day. So if God is asking you as a human being to forgive people 499 times in a day, in a day, can you imagine? I mean, nobody can sin so much in a day. And God is still saying forgive. Can you imagine if God is telling us, giving that kind of requirement and demand to us to forgive other human beings in a day, just every day, 400 and, you know, I don't know, 500 times a day, you know, you know how, many, how, how much more of God? How many times does God have to forgive us before we exhaust his goodness? So if, if it's going to be for man, you can forgive somebody for, 400, for 500 times in a day. So that means for God, it will be like 5 million times. You have to offend him 5 million times in a day. And still you will not exhaust his goodness. So don't you ever put condemnation mark on yourself and say that, uh, you, know, you know, that no, well, I've sinned so many times or I'm sinning so many times. I'm forgiving so many times. As long as you have the right heart, as long as you still want to live right, as long as you are pursuing, you really intend to live right and do what is right, you know, you will never exalt God's goodness. By the way, I didn't ask you to go and share this link. Please, let's go, let's stop right now, everybody, and let's go and share, uh, and let's go and share the link. Let's go and share this link, please. Let's, let's stop right now and look for our share button. Look for your share button right now. Let's everybody share, look for their share button, and let's go and 
pressed because the reason why I want you to share this is because this is such a crucial message and it's going to bless a lot of people. I don't doubt it. So I want you to go look for your share button. Let's go and share this message because it's going to give somebody a lifeline and a hope. And uh, besides that, when you are sharing it, make sure that you write something. Uh, even if you have shared it already, go and write something for people. Let people know that this is a hope giver for them and that this message is going to help them. Just write what you feel inside, whatever you feel in your heart that you could write while you are sharing. While you are sharing, don't just share, write some notes, write something. You know, challenge your people or people who are going to watch this uh, uh, through your blog or through your timeline. And besides, when you share it, you get a copy. This is the only way for you to get a copy for yourself. So if you want to get a copy of this message for yourself, just share it, and it will go to your timeline. So the first thing we do is that we come to God in brokenness, we come to God in, in, in repentance, and we come to God to take responsibility for whatsoever has happened, and we take responsibility for our actions in that regard. In that regard. Next point. The next thing that we want to do the next thing that we want to do is that we want to, you want to make sure that you are not just asking for God's forgiveness. Make sure that you, are, you forgive yourself as well. You must make sure that you forgive yourself. Don't just ask for God's forgiveness. God will forgive you quite all right. Now, the problem that most people have is that even though God has forgiven them, but they keep on killing themselves. Even though God has forgiven them, but they keep on hurting themselves. They keep on condemning themselves. They keep on uh, destroying their lives. They keep on destroying their lives for unforgiveness. So what you need to do is that you don't just ask for, take responsibility for God and ask God to forgive you. Once God has forgiven you, us, now you have to work on forgiving yourself. You must make sure that you actually forgive yourself. So it's not just that God, you have guilty before God, yes, but make sure you forgive yourself as well. Make sure you forgive yourself. So if you, if you have done something wrong, forgive yourself. And if, if, there, is, if there is anybody involved, it might, be, uh, it might be necessary for you to ask those people for forgiveness as well. But if the people are not aware, that is if those people are aware of what is wrong, if they are not aware of what, whatever the thing is, it might not be always right to always come out and tell them the thing that they don't know anything about. You might be destroying them more, and you might be bringing more destruction than good. So, you know, you have to look at every situation differently. But the first the thing I want to deal with today is for you to forgive yourself and to, for, to ask for God's forgiveness, to forgive yourself. Now, if there is somebody that is aware of the situation, this is our next, this is the next point. After you are forgiving yourself, after you are forgiving yourself, the next thing you want to do, look into that situation. Is there anybody who is suffered from what you've done? Is there anyone who is being hurt by your action? Is there anyone who is being hurt by your action? Or who was who, who your your action has affected negatively or is hurt or is brought damage to? If there are people like that who are suffering as a result of your actions, if there are people who are suffering or are hurt as a result of your, your sin, then you want to take responsibility and ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness from them. Forgive, why you should ask for forgiveness or wh why you want to ask for forgiveness from them, even though God has forgiven you, but you want to also care, not just for your own healing, but you want to care for the healing of other people as well. So especially if you know that those other people are suffering and those other people are hurt. So the reason why you are going to ask for forgiveness from them is for restitution. You want to go and ask for restitution. You want to go and restitute. You want to go and restore what has been damaged. So if you are in the position to restore, maybe you stole something from somebody and you know that the person is hurting and the person is suffering from that thing you stole and you still have that thing with you, it makes more sense. It makes logical sense for you to take that thing and take it back to the person so that the person will not keep on suffering for the damage that you have 
cost from their lives. Let's say you took money from somebody or you borrowed money from someone and you are not repaying that person and that person is suffering, that person is not, cannot build this business, cannot build this family because you are with his money and you are not giving him his money. You say, God, forgive me. And God has forgiven you, but you are not, you, and the other person is suffering. It's going to be very difficult that you be able to enjoy that forgiveness. And you need, really need to care for other people's well-being as well before you could say, okay, you could enjoy your own forgiveness. If you, if, if, if you want God to truly forgive you, you have to forgive others. But apart from forgiving others, you know, think about restitution. Think about restoring what had been lost, what had been stolen, what had been damaged in the life of other people. Now, there are some, some situations whereby, there, you know, you cannot restore what has been damaged because these are moral things or these are emotional things or these are spiritual things. But even maybe your forgiveness or your uh, true confession or true repentance might help heal those people a little bit. So if there are people that are involved and, uh, and uh, you know that you hurt them and you have brought damage into their lives, you might want to at least render some apology to them or render some uh, form of uh, repentance before them and let them know that, you know, you are tru truly uh, sorrowful or sad about what has happened and that you don't intend to hurt them further, and that even the fact that they are hurting because of you, that you regret it, that you want to ask for their forgiveness. You know, that's a good thing to do. That's the right thing to do. So some people say, oh, do you pr practice rest you know, restitution? Is your church practice restitution? It's not about church. It's not about church doctrine. It's just about living by your conscience. It's just by doing what is right. It's just by saying that, okay, how could I be enjoying forgiveness? How could I be enjoying, you know, a good life here when through my action or because of my action or indulgence or lack of action, some people are dying, some people are suffering, or some people are having, you know, you are not enjoying that same life that I intend to enjoy. So you don't want uh, their, their bad feelings or their, you know, their, you know, their pain to come back to you as uh, as a torment as a torment because can you imagine if there are people out there that are you know that you've hurt so bad and they are cursing you and they are speaking evil about you and they are pronouncing the wrong words against you or about your life uh, against your life and 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 uh, and you have a reason i mean there's a reason for that and there is you know it is a it is something that is uh you know that is justifiable you know, that is going to be affecting you one way or the other. It's going to be taking you back. It's going to be drawing you back one way or the other. So that there are evil uh, intent or no, evil thoughts or evil words or evil even curses will not affect you and you will not suffer from them. It might be better for you to do what you need to do, to just make things right. Make things right. And at least through forgiveness, at least through repentance, at least, at least through you know, taking responsibility. So it's about taking responsibility before God, taking responsibility before yourself, and taking responsibility before people who were, you know, directly affected or hurt, you know, through your action or your deed. Okay. Next thing that we want to do is that after you know that you have met your ways and you've met, you know, the path, you know, you've corrected <coughs> the things that are wrong, uh, You've corrected the things that are wrong. <clears throat> Just what you need to do next is that uh, you need to uh, turn around and change. You need to change your lifestyle or your attitude to live based on, you know, the right principles or the kingdom kingdom principles. You know, there is somebody that has just gone through operation or that is just about to go through operation or something like that. You have a situation with your it's a breast or or lump and um, in your breast, I think, and you are, you know, either you've just gone through operation or you are about to go through operation. Uh, God is healing you right now. Just minister, just just touch yourself and God, God is ministering, ministering to you. And because you are forgiving, you are living forgiveness. You see, sometimes forgiveness and lack of forgiveness is what is holding us back. 
once forgiveness takes place, once God, once God knows that you are forgiving somebody, you are releasing, the healing power of God just comes to you. There's another person that is having problem in your digestive system right now. God is healing you. You see, you are forgiving yourself, you are forgiving other people, and you are taking decisions to ask for forgiveness, to take responsibility. That is a healing process on itself. And the Spirit of God and the power of God will begin to touch you and flow into you, and resolve your situations, and resolve your issues as well. Because these are spiritual laws, and these are, are spiritual things that will really help you. So and the next thing that you want to do, um, after you know you have forgiven yourself, you have asked for forgiveness, God has forgiven you, and you have asked for forgiveness from people who are affected, you want to go ahead and you know change your lifestyle. Because it's not enough to just ask for forgiveness. You must look for kingdom principles. You must look for the word of God and use those word of God to change your life. You want to go to the word of God, you know, go to the scriptures or research and find the right principles that you can now use to change your life around, to turn your life around. You know the things that you did wrong and you know the very patterns and the behavioral patterns and the principles that caused you to misbehave or to sin or to do something wrong. Now, that you have amended your ways, now that God has forgiven you, now that other people are forgiving you, now that you are forgiving yourself, you must base your life and your lifestyle on different principles. So you must now look for the right principles, look for the right books that will strengthen. Maybe you knew the principles in your mind, but you are not strong enough to live by those principles. Maybe you knew those words, things that were wrong, but you don't have the energy, you don't have the moral power, you don't have the, you know, you, you've not built the fortitude in you to be able to live right. So what you want to do, you want to go and look for the right books, you want to go and look for books or tapes or cassettes of messages that affirm those value systems or those particular uh, characteristics character traits that were missing in your life that will help you to build it. So you begin to build a system, another system that will build a solid foundation in you, in your character, in your pattern, in your attitude that will help you to be able to actually change and be able to behave better and be able to actually, you know, build a strong basis, build a strong basis to be able to resist those kind of trials and temptations in the future. So for you to be able to overcome those temptations in the future, for you to be able to avoid falling into similar situations, you need to fortify yourself. You need to fortify yourself. And the best way to fortify yourself is by, you know, studying, by, you know, engaging in self-education, by, uh, you know, reading books on that subject, uh, you know, listening to messages, and just doing the right things that will give you, you know, the strength, the moral strength, and that will help you to cultivate the strength and the, the, the fortitude and the perseverance and the and the stamina to be able to stand when temptations or trials come in that in that particular direction in the future. So, so because you don't just want to get you don't just want to get freed momentarily. You don't just get want to get forgiven right now for the things that you, you know that have come into your life because of your actions or your wrong actions. But you want to be able to avoid them in the future. You want to be able to avoid them in the future. And the way to do that is to get more knowledge, is to get more revelation, because my people are perished for lack of knowledge. And when you get more revelation, when you get more insight, you will be able to walk in the light. And that light will set you free. free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, you know, but not just knowing the head, but you must make sure that that truth becomes your flesh. So the reason why you want to listen to those, that word is to listen for as many times as possible until the word becomes flesh in you. You want that word to become flesh in you. And then that's when you are able to stand strong, then your foundation is rebuilt, and then you'll be able to stand against temptations and trials in the future. Because when, when, when the Bible says that if the foundation is faulty, that even the righteous cannot do anything. Even the righteous will sin. Even the righteous will fall because the foundation is faulty. So, But once your foundation is being amended and is being corrected, then you'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to, you know, stand up against any uh, temptation that might come in the future. So what do you do after you've learned, uh, you've, you, you know, you've fortified, you're fortified yourself and you've, you know, studied and you're getting more principles into your life? Uh, the next thing you want to do is don't let anything take you back to the past. 
Don't let anybody remind you of your problem, of your sin, of your weakness. Don't entertain any kind of uh, condemnation, either from other people or from yourself. You know, you've, you've resolved the issues, move on. Just move on. Don't let anybody be reminding you that you did this last year or you did this last month, you did this last week, you did that the day before yesterday. Things that happened have happened. You've said to date, learn to learn, I mean, learn to live. And you might, if you, might, you might want to use it as a lesson for other people or you might want to use it to teach other people or to go back to it just to be able to exalt and be able to... Uh, teach or train other people but you don't want to go back to it you know to judge yourself to condemn yourself or to be accusing yourself or to even be pitying yourself so don't entertain pity party don't entertain self-pity don't entertain self-complaint don't entertain you know self-condemnation and don't entertain condemnation from other people as well you know make sure that you do like god and what does god do god forgives and forgets and it just forgets it as if it never happened so learn to forget your downfalls learn to forget your fallings and you remember them only in the sense that you want to you know remember them not to fall back into them only in the sense that you want to remember them to teach other people but not to remember them to keep on condemning yourself not to remember them to keep on pitying yourself not to keep, remember them to keep on you know just you know complaining and blaming other people and doing things like that okay now, what are the other things you could do once you've done all that? Build a good response system. Build a good attitude. Respond positively to similar situations in the future. In the, in, in, there will be similar situations come up in your life all, all the time. Make sure that your response is not that of anger. Your response is not that of resentment. Your response is not that of hatred. Your response is not that of anger. Your response is not that of regret, but make sure that you have good responses, response system. Build a good response mechanism and response system in, in case you come across similar situations in the future. For example, I know somebody that used to be a prostitute, and now if she sees any prostitutes, people, she hates them, or she begins to cry, or she begins to, you know, you know to uh, just act funny. You know, or somebody, you know, who lost uh, a loved one and, you know, that was a very bad experience for them. And now they don't want to see anybody die or they don't want to see anybody talk about death or they lost their child. And now they are thinking, oh, they did abortion. So they don't want to ever see anybody with a child or who is pregnant. They cannot hold it. You know, so they are not, they've not developed bright attitude and good attitude. But, you know, it's not just enough for you to be set, be set free from your situation, from your problem. But you must also learn to respond, you know, to respond positively and correctly to the situations in the future, whatsoever that situation might be and uh, whatsoever might be happening in that area of your life. Learn to keep on responding well to that situation. All right. The next thing you want to do after the response mechanism you have, has been put in place is that you want to take a closer look at your life and find a way that you could turn that your bad experience into, uh, into a springboard, into a springboard for yourself in the future. Let's say you, you did abortion one time or the other. Once you have made you, once you make once once you are now sure that you are strong enough, once you are sure that you are strong enough to move forward, you are strong enough to go, you know, to, you know, not to cry when you hear about that, or not to self pity yourself. You are, you have the right responses, you know. Make sure that you try to turn that negative thing, that evil thing that you had, turn to try to turn it into positive things. Try to turn it into positive experience. Try to turn your sorrow into your into your triumph. Try to solve, uh, turn your sorrow into your triumph. So, you know, you want to study more about that subject. Maybe you want to find out why that happened to you or why you were involved in that situation or why that happened to you. You want to study yourself. You want to study people, why it happens to people 
and then you want to now say, how can I help people? Because a lot of things that happen to us is because God wants us to go through it so that we might be able to help other people as well. So you might, you might, you might want to study that subject and, you know, you know, and study yourself and study the ways that you could use your bad experiences to become a good experience for other people for other people. So you want to uh, go out there and begin to reach out to other people who had suffered like you. You know, but a lot of people don't behave like that. What they do is that they put things that they have gone through, they put it so much behind them that they never ever want to talk about them. Well, it's because they have not developed the right attitude. But once you, have, you are healed from that and you have left it behind you and you have the right response system, the right attitude, you know, the best thing to do and the most important thing to do is for you not to waste your experience, not to waste your pain. If you have gone through that pain and that sorrow of whatever that trial is, you know, try to build in yourself such a strong fortitude that will allow you to be able to minister to other people, help other people through your experience. So if you've been divorced, why don't you help other women that are struggling with divorce? Or why don't you help other women that, sh that they should not get divorced? If you've suffered a loss of a child or a loss of a loved one, why don't you turn it around into a ministry? Why don't you start a ministry for people who are losing their loved ones and helping them go through that crisis or that situation? Or what? Maybe you should help you start another ministry to help other people right now not to suffer the same kind of loss and to value their loved ones while they are still alive right now. So we could, every experience that we have ever gone through, we could actually turn to something positive. You could turn your experience to your miracle. You could turn your experience to your ministry. You could turn your experience to your platform. So, And it's not by accident that God allow us to go through anything we have gone through in life. Everything, you know, everything you've gone through in your, in your life is actually your wealth. Why don't you turn into your wealth? Why don't you turn into your resources? Why don't you turn it into your, into your, into your, into your blessing? Why don't you turn into your blessing? Just like uh, on Sunday, yesterday actually, uh, we had a lady that, you know, gave back to a... Uh, and, and uh, a disabled a disabled child and a mentally disabled child and you know so she hated all disabled children because of that and she went through all kind of sorrow and struggles that was yesterday night if you didn't see yesterday night's pro uh, program that could have helped you you know so yesterday night she came back and said now she's having one of the most successful ministries and outreaches to rehabilitation centers to children who are disabled who are disabled so we all, all actually have such resources and such potential to turn our minuses into plus to turn our tragedy into triumph and to turn our 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 our, our you know our faults and our mistakes and our failures into 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 victory we could turn our failures into victory and that is all in our hands. So but for, for us to do that, we must be able to go through all the uh, processes and all the steps that are enumerated before you earlier on. But that is the height. That's supposed to be the height of life when you are able to turn every evil thing that has happened to you. Actually, we are all wealthy. We are all very rich. Only we don't think about it that way. If you make a list and do an inventory of your life, and take a, make a list of paper or computer and say, what are the, all the things that I've experienced in my life? Write down all your good experiences on one hand and write down all your bad experiences on the other hand. And then make sure that you turn both the good experiences and the bad experiences, that you turn them into your resources, into your wealth, and into positive, something positive, into something uh, into something you know, positive in your life. I mean, you know, that you discover that you have a lot of wealth. You discover that you have so many resources to give out to people. You know, you can you can you can you can stop on any one of them and you know begin to develop them and begin to reach out to people. You discover that there are a lot of people who are in need of hearing your experiences. There are a lot of people who need to know how you overcame. There are a lot of people who need to know what you went through. There are a lot of people who need to hear and know, you know, what was the situation with you and how did you overcome them. So, you know, don't you ever think that your experience, either they are bad or good, that they, they are not needed or they are past and you believe them in the past. No, always turn them to your profit. Always turn them to your 
to your business. Always turn them to your platform. Always turn them to your springboard. Turn your evil experiences to your profit. Make money out of it. Make ministry out of it. Make blessings out of it. Bless people out of it. You know, reach out to people through it and use it to be an outreach and a, re and, and, uh, and a blessing to so many, many other people. You write a book if you want, like Lyo did, Lyo, or like Inquiro did. Write a book and give life to other people. Give hope to other people. I mean, you know, you know, reach out to people and be a blessing, be a source of blessing to people. You know, some of our tragedies are some of the greatest treasures that God has given unto us. You've got treasures in your hand, and only you are not valuing them or you are not seeing them right. But those are the things, those are the reasons why God will allow us to go through some pains so that those pains are not wasted, those crises are not wasted, so that those troubles are not wasted, those adversaries are not wasted, but they are turned into something that has become our wealth, that has become our provisions and our blessings and blessing for other people as well. Those things could be the greatest blessings for other people also. So turn your sorrow, your experiences into your testimonies and into your victories. Okay. All right. So where are we? Uh, let me call upon anybody that is here today and you, have, you are yet to share the link. If you are yet to share this link, you might want to go and do that right now uh, because I think that you might want to listen to this over and over again. For you to listen to this over and over again, you need to have a copy of it on your own timeline or in your, on, in your hand. And for you to have a copy, the only way to have a copy is for you to uh, press the share button that is under the video. Go share it, get a copy for yourself. And at your convenience, you could always go back to your timeline and watch that program again and again. And also, you want to be a blessing to people on your time, on your on your friend friend list, and uh, for you to for the people on your friends list to be able to see it, you need to be able to write something, write write a few words for them, write a few words for them that you know what you think that this this will be a blessing. How do you think this will be a blessing to them? How you think this will be a blessing to them? Okay. So turn the lessons of your life into your platform. Turn the blessings of your life, the lessons of your sorrow, the lessons of your challenges, the lessons of your uh, crisis. Turn them into your in, 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 into your platform. Into your platform. It's always necessary for all of us to do an inventory and analysis of our crisis. It's interest. It's important for us to do the analysis of our troubles. To do the analysis how they came how we went through it, how we survived it, how God took us through it, through it and how we overcame it, and, uh, and how we eventually came out, and, um, and what that has taught us, and what that could teach other people. Turn your morning into dancing. Turn your morning into dancing, your whipping into dancing. Yeah, so, you know, make sure you have the life lessons. Okay? Make sure you have lessons. So don't just sit there and say, oh, I'm the reason for my sorrow, I'm the reason for my problem, I'm the reason for my crisis, and so, uh, you know, this is so bad, and, you know, just begin to do a self-pity party. That will not take you anywhere. That will only take you to an early grave. That will only take you to an early grave. And you don't want to go to, you don't want to die prematurely. You don't want to die young. You want to live and, you know, give, give testimony and tell the story of how those evil things that happen to you, or those bad things that happen to you, how you are now using them to be a ble to, to bless other people. Uh, how they are now, in fact, that you know, some people in some cases, your crisis will become your finances, your crisis will become your pro your 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 providence, your crisis will become your your financial provision, your fi fi your your it will become your financial sustenance. Sometimes, in some cases, your find your crisis and whatever you're going through will become your your platform for popularity and for 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 fame. And uh, sometimes, some of those things that you are going to that you have gone through your pain, they are the, th the things that are supposed to propel you into a into into a higher ground, into a higher place, and into a greater place in life. And some of them are some of the things that actually were meant to make you who you are supposed to become. So, so you know, you know, this not the thing. The bad things don't always have to be bad. Uh, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-eight tells us that uh, 
you know, God, you know, turns everything to good. God turns everything to good for those who love God and those who are called by him, his purpose and for his purpose. But we are all called for his purpose. And if you love him, you know what? You know, these things that you are going through, they, they, they will work out for your good. They will work out for your good. They are not there to destroy you. And they are not going to be there forever. They are just there in the, in the meantime to teach you some lessons, to make you better, and to bring you closer to your destiny, to, to, <laughs> to bring you closer to what you are meant to be and to the destiny that you are meant to fulfill in your, in your life and in your purpose on the earth. Now, after you have done that, make sure that you live a grateful, a grateful life. Because God has forgiven you. You know that other people have forgiven you. Live a life of, live a life of gratitude. Live a life of gratitude. Uh, be grateful to God. You know, be thankful. Uh, make sure that praise and thanksgiving, thanksgiving occupies uh, a large percentage of your life. Uh, make sure that you live a life where you are mostly grateful to God. Instead of asking for 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 miracles here and there and for things from God, make sure you mainly just thank Him. You mainly just, you know, praise Him, love on Him, uh, build a life, live a life of gratitude in your relationship with God. You know, make sure that you you love on Him, you express your love to Him, you uh, you you know let Him know that you are grateful for everything you do. Because when people begin to forget, when people begin to forget uh, where they are coming from or what God has done for them, they become worse. They become worse off. And they, they tend to repeat that same problem that God delivered them from. So if you don't want God to, to, to repeat, I mean, if you don't want you yourself to repeat what God has delivered you from, if you don't want to go back to the place where God has taken you from, you want to always remember in thanks and in gratitude and in praise, you know, what God has done for you. You want to tell God about it. You want to remind you. You remind yourself. You want to thank God for them. You want to uh, let God know that you are grateful. You want to let God know that you know you 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 are happy for what He has done for you and and that you are very very grateful. You know a lot of things that uh, you know we have done that are wrong. You know, but it's not about that. You know, so we we all think that you know. If we have done something wrong, and if, if it's horribly bad, that we are the only ones like that. No, no. In fact, God will even allow things to happen sometimes for you to mess up. Sometimes God will allow you for you to mess up by yourself because uh, God wants you to know that you are not the God of your life and that you are not the Almighty God and that you are, you are not in charge, really, and that even God could make you to do wrong things. You know, it's, that sounds like evil, like it will never happen. No, but God, you know, God, God knows that we are, we are, you know, we are evil. All of us, we are evil. And sometimes for you to be convinced that you are not as good as you think, that we are all bad and that we are all not, we, they, you know, even when they said to Jesus, Jesus, uh, the good master, you are the good master. He said, no, nobody is good. I am not good. Even Jesus would not call himself good. And that it's important for us to realize that. Sometimes the evil things that we do and the things that we do wrong uh, is just for us to learn that lesson, to learn the lesson that, you know what, I thought I was good, uh, that we thought we were good, and we thought we were satisfied, we were satisfied with self-righteousness. It is self-righteousness that makes us to think that we are good enough. But God will sometimes allow you to do evil, to do wrong. Uh, God will allow you to do wrong so that you will be able to you know, let you know later know and acknowledge that you are fall fallible, that you are fallible. God just wants you. Maybe, I, maybe I said, maybe I didn't quite say it right. That God will make you do it, but God will allow you to do some things that are wrong, so that you will know how fallible you are. For example, in the case of Moses, right? Moses wanted to deliver the children of Israel from bondage, and you know he sensed that call upon himself that. He was a deliverer. He sensed it upon himself that, you know, he had that burden. But God wanted to let him know that, Moses, you cannot do this in your own power, that you are fallible and you are limited and you are, you are not good enough and you are not, you cannot do this. 
So God allowed him to commit that crime he committed. And you know, he killed an Egyptian. Even though God found a way for him, God got, you know, got him out of it. But still, it was, a, it was an evil thing. But it was that evil thing that he did that actually brought him to a place of brokenness. Sometimes, you know, most of us will never really acknowledge that we are, you know, who we are, uh, uh, that we are not as good enough uh, unless we are, we are really brought to, a, to the end of ourselves. So that, that situation in the life of Moses brought him to a, that state of brokenness that really made him to totally submit to God. Okay, now let's look at the lives of the brothers of Joseph. You remember the brothers of Joseph, uh, they, they actually uh, did something that is very bad. They were ready to kill their brother, and so thank God they didn't kill him, but they sold him out into slavery. And you know what? Later on, when we are reading the book of Genesis and the story of jo Mo Joseph, Joseph himself told them that they didn't do that by themselves, that God actually used them to do that. You see, sometimes God will allow us, so allow people to do evil, to, to, to display. It's not that God will send them evil or God will make them do evil, but evil is already in it in all of us. We are already having in evil in our flesh. And, and so sometimes God will just say, without my grace, if I remove my grace, if I remove my mercy, you know, that evil will just come out. And that evil thing, that negative part of you will, will just, you know, be manifested so much that you yourself will be shocked at yourself. You yourself will be surprised that, am I capable of doing this? Am I capable of doing this? You know, it's only because of God's grace that we are all uh, good. You know, nobody can be good by themselves or by himself. I mean, can you imagine that, uh, you know, people like Paul, I mean, he was killing, he was so zealous, he was killing, and he was doing that. And, and because he thought he was religious, he thought he was good. And because, it, but, <laughs> but we discovered that, you know, that was the evil he was actually doing. And then, you know, through that, God brought him to a place of brokenness. You know, sometimes there are a lot of things that God will allow uh, to happen to us just to make us to discover that we are only human and that we are without without him we are nothing well, now what am i trying to say in all of this i'm trying to say don't kill yourself don't blame yourself don't condemn yourself don't torture yourself because you did something wrong one time or the other follow the process follow the things that we have just enumerated out for you and you you know and uh, you'll be able to come out of it and turn into your plus i mean do you even know that peter someone like peter you know, he had to be rebuked by Paul. Paul had to rebuke Peter because, I mean, even though he was an apostle, right? Even though he had been with Jesus. But it got to a place that he, will, he, will not, he was discriminating against people who were not circumcised. He was discriminating against the Gentiles. Even though he was an apostle, he was representing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a premier apostle. But, you know, <laughs> he, was, he was discriminating against, against the uh, Gentiles. He was... He was, you know, he, he, he would not eat with people who are not who are not circumcised, and you know, he, he will, and he will be, he will play games, you know, he will, <laughs> he will, he will, he will, he will pretend that when the Jews come, he will leave the the Gentiles and say, oh, I was never with them. But you know, God was just also allowing that to happen to let him know that you know what, you know, we all, we without God, we are nothing. And, and Peter was the one who learned that lesson above everybody else. You know, God told him that all of you, Jesus told all of them, you are all going to deny, deny me. Because God, Jesus wanted them to teach that, to learn that lesson. Jesus wanted them to learn that lesson. And Jesus told them, you are all going to deny me. You are all going to deny me. And Peter said, I deny you? I will never deny you. And Jesus didn't even say deny. He said, like, you are all going to betray me. Not just deny, but you are all going to be, de betray me. And Peter was so confident that I would never do evil. I would never do evil. I would never betray. I'm not the kind of betray. I would never betray anybody. I, especially you, Lord, I would never betray you. Well, you know what happened? When you begin to say you will never betray, you will never do this, you cannot do this, you, you are good, you cannot do this, you can never, anything could happen, I will never do this. I am this, I am this. <laughs> you know the story of Peter, right? How many times he denied. And God told him, you're going to deny me three times. Why? Well, it's not because... Of the evilness of Peter, that you know, when we do wrong, it's not that God is saying you are evil. It's just to let us know that without Him, we are all evil. 
Without him, we are all helpless. Without him, we can do nothing. So it's just about getting us to a place whereby we know that we are all fallible. We are all fallible. We are all humans. And that's why some of our crises will be caused by us. And that's why some of our you know, crises and troubles and adversities are our handworks. Some, some of them are just our handworks. And you should not be ashamed of this. And some of people, some people will never talk about their faults. They will never talk about their failures. They will never talk about their, their, their mistakes because they are thinking, oh, I should be holy. I should be upright. I should be always all right. No, no, no. There is no human being that has not been there. There is no human being that has not been there. God makes all of us to go through that. And that's why before Jesus Christ left, that was the last lesson he taught his disciples. For them never to rely on their righteousness. For them never to rely on themselves. He said, you will never I said, I will never deny you. You will never deny me. Okay, you see what happens. You see what happens. So we are all fallible and we should never rely on our own righteousness. So the fact that you are the one to blame for your for your for, for your problem or for your crisis, not a big deal. Things will happen in life. Just take responsibility for it. You know, you know, be broken before God. Ask for forgiveness. You know, repent truly. Let God see your heart. Let it be sincere. You know, forgive yourself. Forgive. Let God forgive you. You know, ask for forgiveness from people if you are really at fault from you know from what they have done to you to you, and move on. And turn that evil and negative experience into something marvelous, into something uh, positive, and into something glorious that will be a blessing to you and to other people in the future. That will be a blessing to you and other people in the future. Well, 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 what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my time is, uh, my time is coming to an end. My time is... Uh, yeah, the time is fast coming to an end. My time is fast coming to an end. Uh, sorry. My time is fast coming to an end. So uh, let me hear what you say. Let me hear what you both say about about this teaching and your reactions and your attitude. Let me see what you people are writing here. Let me see what you people are writing here. Okay. So if you have not shared the link, please go ahead and share the link for this message. For this message, and uh, if you have not shared the link, go share that link. And uh, yeah, let me see what you are all writing. Uh, Eukarya uh, Elo Ebo says, <laughs> love you loads, Pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, um, Sandra Idawu said, they that are old have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Hallelujah. Uh, Fumilayo Agape say, thank you, sir. Please don't look at the time. We are not in a hurry. <laughs> but I need to go home. I am like one and a half hours away from my house now. I need to travel. And it's about 10 o'clock. It's actually after 10 o'clock here. And I still have some very vital and crucial calls to make and conference calls all over the world. Um, Paul, I would, I, I would daily said, I am broken by these words. Well, thank God. Uh, Joanna says, oh, no, don't let this time come to an end. <laughs> you want me to be here forever? I will be back tomorrow. I will continue this message tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow in the sense that I will continue talking about crisis tomorrow. Uh, Deola Disu says, Pastor Sunday, we are really appreciative of your dedication to teach us in depth. My mind is completely renewed on this platform. May God replenish you greatly. Replenish you greatly. Thank you. Elizabeth Ali said, uh, Pastor, you have ministered to even the blood flowing in my veins. I love you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, Annie Beard said, Pastor, this message is the power of God unto salvation. Thank you. It means it's the gospel. It's the gospel. 
uh, Daniel says, thank you, sir. It's like you know what is in our mind as per time and per minute. <laughs> thank God, thank God. Dorothy Simo says, Pastor, the verse that says, should we continue to sin so that mercy will abandon? The answer is no. So help me here. Yeah, I don't see any problem there. I don't see any problem there. That's exactly what I'm saying too. Uh, uh, she, Sandra, said, I'm so broken on the inside, sir. God bless you, sir. Love you loads. Thank you. Anastasia, uh, okay, she's writing my lessons for you. Uh, Abito Joe said, thank you, sir. I'm really blessed. Thank God. Thank God. Solomon, uh, Solomon said, thank you, Pastor Sunday. I'm blessed by this message this afternoon. Okay, that's afternoon in their place. It must be in America or somewhere. The other side of this teaching this afternoon is that you can be the victim and still turn it to, the, to be a platform of your breakthrough as well. Yeah, that's exactly what we spoke about today. Thank you. Uh, oh, for... May Steven says, many thanks, Pastor. Molly, Pastor, thank you. Patricia, thank you, Pastor. I'm really blessed. Abbasi Godwin, thank you, Pastor. You are truly the mouthpiece of God. I humble, I'm humble by your teachings. Princess, Pastor, this is a very, very powerful message. Thank you. Well, it's just because it's life messages. Uh, these are messages that, uh, you know, Real life situations, real life situation. If you are not yet, if you are not yet share the link, please go ahead and share the link to this message. And if you miss my other messages, please go to my blog, sundayadelajablog.com, sundayadelajablog.com, and you'll be able to see the video blog there. Under the video blog, you'll be able to see all the old, other messages that you have missed. You'll be able to listen to all other messages that you've missed. And you could go to my blog, to my YouTube page, and all, and and um, yeah, and. You know, and join my YouTube page as well. You'll be receiving the notification for all the messages if you subscribe to Sunday Delaja Official. Uh, Favor Yedepo said, Thanks, Pastor Sunday. Love you a lot. Anastasia, Pastor, you are a great teacher. I can understand why people crowd, why, why people crowd follow Jesus. Why crowd and people follow Jesus. Gregory Femi. Love you, Pastor. Boluji Day, thanks for this great eye-opener to forgiving ourselves. We should use both our successes and failures as a platform to bless and edify others. Uh, Princess, you are just the greatest teacher and, I'm, and all the best. Love you, Lord. Thank you. Bright, say thank you, Pastor. What an awesome inspiration. I'm so blessed. Afolabi, say this is a revolutionary message. Uh, thanks for being a true leader in this generation. Galina Krishenka, dear pastor, thank you for your time. Two times and more a day for us. God bless you. Uh, Oshuko said, thanks, pastor. God bless you. Christina said, you are taking us by hands. It's like teaching one by one. I'm blessed. Thank you and God bless you, pastor. Uh, Paul Eric, thank you so much for a life-changing message that really set me free from self-condemnation. And I bet it. Pastor, you need to come to Akwa Ibon State, Nigeria, where people will be glad to hear your kind of message. She, Sandra, say, good to see you here. Okay, that's for me. That's not for me. Uh, blessing, Dra. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful um, message now and then. I have long forgiven myself for any wrong I might have done to cause myself any problem in life. But you have added so much to me tonight. I love you so, so much. I'm even speechless after this message. God bless you once again, sir. Layo Shao says, Thank you, Pastor, for equipping us with these life lessons. Many of us on this platform are already launching our full stream, turning our experiences into platform to uplift people. Thank you so much, Pastor. Emmanuel Ayeni say, thank you, sir. Another justified blow to self-condemnation. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, I hope that you people will spread the word. You will, you know, write something as you are sharing the link. Write something there for people and let the other people be blessed as well. If you didn't get my book, uh, Only God Can Save Nigeria, 
I will wish that all of you go get your copy. It's on Amazon. It's on Okada, Okada uh, Books and, you know, other places. So go, go get your own copy and then other books will also be able to help you. And I also think that this is another book, I mean, another teaching that we should turn into a book. So if you, if you are interested in helping turn this message into a book, you need to write to me then. My email is pastor at godembassy.org. God Embassy. Not God's Embassy, not S, but godembassy.org. Godembassy.org. Lola Shoronke says, uh, this message is a great blessing to me and many others. Thank you. John Echo said, Pastor, I'm so attached to your teachings because they are so practical in approach. And my church is experiencing revival when I put your tip, tips in practice. Thank God. Thank God, John. Thank you for sending me that. Christina Lampe said, Pastor, do you have the preaching from Sunday in church on your video list? Oh, did you watch our video, our message in the church on Sunday? That was uh, in Russian. I think I, I preached in Russian. So you watched it maybe over the YouTube or something, or over the Facebook. I don't know how you watched it. But uh, but I, my, I don't know, I, you know, we can find out. But, you know, you have so many things to listen to <laughs> from me. Olate Julat say, thank you, Pastor. More grace for you in Jesus' name. Paul Eric said, God's forgiveness and grace is immeasurable and beyond all human understanding, but it is real. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fidel Nadi said, I have shared the link, sir. I want others to benefit us, so thank you. Um, okay, it was translated. Elizabeth Ali said it was translated on YouTube. If it was translated on YouTube, then it should be on YouTube. So, Christina, you should go to YouTube to look for it. The message from Sunday then will be on YouTube. John Oboi said, what is the link to the message again, please? Go to my YouTube, Sunday Adelaja Official. That's on YouTube. But on my blog, it is sundayadelajablog.com. sundayadelajablog.com. Kemi says, you are simply the best, Dr. Sunday Adelaja. Molly said, please do have good rest tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Shashal Ubuntu said, this message is life-changing. Thank you. Shao Smith says, Sunday's message was translated into English on YouTube. Okay. Thank God. Uh, Molly said, Pastor, you are the image of God. Thank you. And we are all supposed to be the image of God, by the way. All right, thank you so very much, everyone. You know, I still need to drive home. Uh, I don't drive myself, but, you know, I still have a bunch of people I'm going to load in my car as we are going home today. So uh, see you guys tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be here tomorrow to, to be with you and continue this topic. So God bless you all. God bless. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Bye.